Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be going over a problem from the 2021 TMUA paper. And now this question, lots of students got wrong. And that's because there's a little trick to this. And so the reason I'm sharing this video is to show you this trick so you can be careful of it in the future. What is the question? We're told that the angle theta can take any of the values 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degrees and so on up to 360 degrees. We want to know for how many of these values of theta is it true that sine of theta times root 1 plus sine theta times root 1 minus sine theta plus cos theta times root 1 plus cos theta times root 1 minus cos theta equals 0. If you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself and I'm going to dive straight into a solution. Okay, so most students would have been able to do the first step correctly, but then you'll see why it becomes a little bit fiddly. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to notice is that all of these square roots are nice and well defined, and they don't enter, you know, the complex plane. I'm not worrying about the square root of any negative numbers, because 1 plus sine theta will be non-negative, because sine theta is between minus 1 and 1. Same for this guy, same for this guy, same for this guy. So everything here is nice and real. I'm going to bring these two square roots together, so I get sine of theta times the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta, and then similarly over here, cos theta, times oops, the square root of 1 minus cos squared theta and this all I want to equal 0. Now we're just going to use the trig identity sine squared theta plus cos that squared theta equals 1. So 1 minus sine squared theta is just cos squared theta. So this is sine theta times the square root of cos squared theta plus cos theta times uh, the square root of sine squared theta equals 0. And now what we can do is just cancel the square root and the square, so we get sine theta times cos theta uh, plus cos theta times sine theta equals zero. Except we can't. We can't quite cancel the square root and the square just like that. And this is what most students would have done. They would have just jumped from there to there and then proceeded and not noticed this. When we're square rooting cos squared theta, that doesn't always equal cos theta. And let me just illustrate why. If I have x squared and I tell you it equals 9, that does not necessarily mean that x equals 3, right? It could be plus or minus 3. And the way that we get around this is instead of saying x equals 3, we say the absolute value of x equals 3. It's a very similar thing going on here. When we square root something squared, we don't necessarily get that same something, but we get its absolute value. So, for example, if I had x squared equals 5, what can I deduce? I can say the absolute value of x is root 5. I can't necessarily say that x equals 5, but I can say that the absolute value of x equals root 5. So if I get rid of all of this, I can say sine theta times the absolute value of cos theta plus cos theta times the absolute value of sine theta equals zero. And now this is definitely true. And now I just have to deal with this kind of awkward looking equation with absolute value signs. In. And you may go, well, how on earth do I deal with this? Well, the trick to dealing with absolute values is to think about the ranges in which you know whether the inside is definitely positive or definitely negative. So what I'm going to do is split this interval 1 up to 360 into four different kind of categories. OK, so let's go through the first case where theta is between 1 and 90. What do I know about cos theta? Well, I can just think about the graph of cos theta. Well, cos theta is going to be positive or non-negative, I should say, because when theta equals 90, cos theta is 0. But that means cos theta is non-negative. And so I can just say that this is sine theta times cos theta for this first term. And similarly, for the second term, I know sine theta is going to be positive, so this is just going to be cos theta times sine theta equals zero. Now I can bring these two guys together, so that's two sine theta cos theta, and then just dividing both sides by two, I get cos theta times sine theta must be zero. And I need to think about when this is true for any of these values here. And the only time this is true is when theta equals 90 degrees, in which case cos of theta is zero and so this whole thing is zero so when theta is between 1 and 90 we only get one solution theta equals 90. we're going to do something very similar in each of the other cases so now let's do when theta is between 91 and 180 what happens here now cos theta is going to be negative so this first term isn't sine theta cos theta it's a minus sine theta 
cos theta. And how about this second term over here? Well, sine theta is still positive or non-negative. And so cos theta times absolute value sine theta is just going to be cos theta times sine theta. And as you can clearly see, this is definitely going to be zero for all values of theta here. So in the first case, we've got one solution. And in this case here, we're going to get 90 solutions. Every single value of theta in this range here is going to work. It's going to give us zero when we plug it in here. Great, so we found 91 solutions to this equation so far. We just need to check the last two cases. Okay, so if theta is between 181 and 270, cos theta is negative and si or non positive, and sine theta is non positive as well, or in fact, strictly negative. And so, therefore, we're going to get two minus signs here. So we get minus sine theta cos theta minus sine theta cos theta equals zero. Those two are the same term, so dividing both sides by minus 2, I get that sine theta cos theta must be 0. And again, I need to ask myself, when is this equation true for theta inside this range here? And it's only true for theta equals 270, and that would be that cos theta is 0 there. And so we get one solution here. And finally, the final case, theta is between 270 or 271 and 360. Uh, what can I say about this equation? Well, cos theta goes back to being positive, and cos theta, sine theta, well, oh, sorry, absolute value of sine theta, sine theta is still negative. So I've got a plus here, a minus here, and we're going to get something very similar to the second case, where we get plus sign here, a negative sign here, and it's just going to be zero. And so we're going to get another 90 solutions here. And so in total, we've got 91 plus another 91. That's a total of 182 solutions to this equation here. And that would be our final answer here. So the TMUA is multiple choice, so there are lots of different options here. Uh, but with the TMUA, they usually are quite mean in that they, for questions like this, where they know students are probably going to fall into a trap, they make the answer that most students would have got one of the correct answers. So you think you've got it right until you realise you haven't. So don't get caught out by this trick. Uh, make sure the rule of thumb is when you take the square root of x squared, that's not equal to just x, it's equal to the absolute value of x. And that's something you've got to be very, very careful of. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing as well. That's all for now. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.